Wispian. It is August, which means it's back to school season, but I don't have to go back to school, so sucks for you. I'm just kidding, I'm so sorry. I do want to help you prepare for the new school year in any way that I can, so I'm doing this two-part back to school series. I don't know if you can call it a series when it's just two parts. Today we are going to talk about all things back to school, time management, especially for those of you who are going to be doing online classes from home, but this also applies to just anyone who's gonna be doing any kind of work from home, but also to people who are going to be going to an actual physical school building, because you still gotta manage your time. So hopefully this advice will help you with that. So we are gonna talk about how to stay focused, how to set up your study space, how to not get burned out, and how to maintain your mental health. So let's do this. So the first thing I wanna emphasize is that it's important to get organized and prepared for the school year in advance, because it's a lot easier to do that before you're in the midst of all the school stress, rather than to wait until you're completely overwhelmed and stressed out and now you have to dig yourself out of the hole that you created by not having proper systems and planning in place. So I know you probably just want to savor that last bit of summer break right now, but think about your future self. Obviously you can't avoid 100% of stress, but if you put in that work now, it's gonna save you so much time and so much stress in the future. So by watching this video, you are already well on your way to doing that. Good job. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, so I also wanted to direct you to some helpful resources on there that can help you prepare for the new school year as well. So pretty much if you just go to the library of classes and you look at the productivity category, you'll find lots of very applicable information for students, but because I'm so nice and so thoughtful, I also put together a list for you. So first up, all these classes, the one on how to study for exams is more than four hours long. I mean, it is jam-packed with information. I think one of the things school often kind of fails to teach us is how to actually study, and so you kind of have to learn that for yourself, or you can let Ollie teach you. He also happens to be a YouTuber, podcaster, and a doctor. So obviously he's doing something right in terms of time management. So you can also check out his productivity masterclass. Thomas Frank, who's the creator of the blog and YouTube channel College Info Geek, which he started to share his experiments in trying to become a more effective student, also has a class on how to create a productivity system and a class on productivity habits. If you're struggling to motivate yourself to do your homework, there's this class. If you wanna learn about a specific tool that you might find handy for school, there's classes on different apps and systems like Evernote, Things 3, bullet journaling, Notion, etc. I did a video a few weeks back on essentialism, so that can be really helpful in helping you prioritize your life as a student. Because as you probably know, it can get very overwhelming and you can have a lot of plates spinning at once. So that class can help you figure out which plates are the most important plates. So I linked all of those classes in the description for your convenience. You probably already know that Skillshare is a really great place to learn about business and freelancing and illustration and photography and yada 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 but learning is also a skill so Skillshare is a great place to learn how to learn basically and just get those study and organizational habits in shape. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get two free months of a premium membership so that you can get ready for the school year. Okay so now let's talk about distractions namely internet distractions. Dun dun dun. Especially if you'll be doing online classes, you'll be faced with a lot of temptations because unfortunately, the tool that you use to access all of your homework and schoolwork is also the same tool that can bring you to Netflix and social media. However, you don't have to exercise that much willpower to avoid these temptations if you just set up rules and restrictions for yourself that make it hard to access those temptations. So what I'm talking about here is downloading an internet blocker. I really like using this one called Freedom. I've talked about it in a previous video, but basically when it's running, you can have it set up so that it only allows you to access websites that are related to school. So obviously you're gonna wanna block social media Media apps that's a given but also try to avoid Google and email and other things like that which definitely can be used for work but very often they also end up becoming distractions so you have to be really careful about how you use them from personal experience I can say that working with an internet blocker can definitely be a learning curve at first I have locked myself out of communication tools that I needed to contact someone about a meeting I've learned now so it's fine but I do have two tips for you to help you still get your work done even 
even when using an internet blogger. So first of all, let's say when you do math homework, you often have questions that you need to Google. So instead of going to Google where you can very easily be distracted, find a couple of specific websites that you can go to for those answers. So for example, for math, you might do something like Khan Academy or Purple Math. It is much more difficult to get distracted on Khan Academy than it is on Google. So for example, when I study Korean, if I had a question about how a vocab word was used or something, I used to go to Google and look that up, but then once I got the internet blocker, I realized that most of the best answers were on highnative.com, so I just added that to my permitted sites list, and now if I have a question, I go directly there. This wooden floor is very tough on the joints. And then number two, for email and messaging and all those distracting things, try working with the Pomodoro technique or any interval of time that you want to use and set your internet blocker only for that 25 minute chunk of work time. So if you're working and you do need to check an email about something, chances are that you don't need it that very, very second. There's some way that you could continue to make progress on whatever it is you're working on without that little bit of information that you need to retrieve. Like you can keep working on writing your essay draft without going to find the email from your professor to find out what the word count limit for the essay is, you know? So just make a note of whatever it is that you need to check up on and then once you're timer rings, your internet blocker will also end at that same time, and then you can go check whatever it is that you so desperately needed to know. So not only will this keep you from getting distracted by all of the other stuff in your inbox, but it'll also make you more efficient because you'll end up with a little list of things that you need to check up on and you can get that done all at once. Another helpful tool by the same people who make freedom is called pause. Now this one doesn't completely block your access to distracting websites. It just makes you wait a couple of seconds. I think it's five seconds before you're allowed to access them. I know it doesn't sound like much, but Many a time I have clicked on a link to an Instagram account or a YouTube video or some random article and then that green screen pops up and just in that five seconds I realize, you know what, I don't really need to see that. I can just close that tab and move on with my life. Just the fact that it forces you to pause your automatic web surfing and ever so briefly consider what you're doing is actually so, so powerful. And it's really not going to impede your productivity because waiting five seconds to access a website in the grand scope of the day is literally nothing. It'll most likely be outweighed by the time that you save every single time that you decide you don't actually need to visit that website. Next up, I wanna talk about time blocking your day. Basically, blocking out chunks of time for specific tasks and projects. That's the definition. So this is really, really helpful for structuring your time outside of class, especially if you're in high school, if you're going to a physical school building, then much of your day from like eight to three is pretty much structured out for you. But time blocking is how you can structure your evening time to make the most of that. If you're doing online classes or you're in college where time isn't as structured, this is gonna be even more important. So each morning or at the start of each week from your to-do list, from your list of assignments, Estimate how long each of those things will take and then schedule out time for that. By setting yourself little time limits, it helps you stay on track. So maybe you get stuck on a math problem. You won't have time to ruminate on it and sink too much time into it because you are working on a schedule. So you're just gonna move on, come back to it later. The answer will probably come quicker to you once you can take a look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. You can also implement this if you have like study halls during the day. So instead of being like, I'm gonna finish as much homework as I can during study hall, which is a really big goal to have, you can set yourself specific targets instead. So this is especially nice for classes where you can kind of predict how long assignments will take you, like if you have nightly reading to do or a weekly set of math problems, you can make a routine out of that so it more or less happens automatically. All right, so in the last section, I very briefly mentioned something called a shitty first draft, and I just want to briefly elaborate on that eloquent term. So a shitty first draft is just the idea that when you start something, your first draft is going to be really, really bad, probably. And that's okay, because you can only get to an awesome final result if you have something to work with. So if you spend an hour writing a really bad, repetitive essay with tons of cliches and boring word choice and you just skip over entire sections of the essay because you don't know what to write for them, that's still way better than if you just stared at a blank computer screen for an hour because you weren't sure how to write the perfect first sentence. With a bad essay, at least you have a structure in place, you have your basic ideas down on the page, now you just have to go through and fix it and pretty it up. 
it's a lot better than starting with nothing. So this is really relevant when it comes to writing essays, planning presentations, or any sort of creative work that you might do outside of school even. Start with a shitty first draft. Now let's talk about creating your study space. So. A little spoiler about my room makeover. One of the things that I'm getting for my room is this adjustable motorized sitting standing desk that I'm so excited about. I wasn't gonna tell you about it, but I am in love with it. And when you're in love, you just have to let the world know. So that's something that I know will be really, really helpful to me in my study space, my workspace, but you don't need to spend money on a motorized adjustable desk. You can work at a kitchen counter. You can use a box like I did for a really long time. And there are also lots of other low cost or free ways to optimize your study space. So for one, keep it minimal. I would say generally try not to have too much visual clutter on your desk. It can definitely get distracting. I do like having some decorations on the wall. It keeps me inspired in a way, but I find that the clearer my actual desktop is, the clearer my mind is when I'm working. Keep it organized, so make sure that everything has its own place, like having a pencil cup, a tray of papers that you need to do something about, a place for your textbooks, your notebooks, etc. If possible, try to find a place with minimal distractions, so away from any noise, away from electronics, if you have a busy view outside your window, away from your window. Having a dedicated place set aside for studying is also really helpful. So for example, when I'm writing or planning videos, lately I've been going down to the basement to work on that to change up my environment, but because it's always the same environment for the same type of work, it's kind of become programmed in my brain that anytime I'm in the basement is when I have to be creative and focused and productive. So if you sleep, watch TV, and do homework all in the same place, then all of those activities will kind of start to blend together and you won't really be as effective at studying or as effective at relaxing or sleeping. All right, let's talk about multitasking. Multitasking, not good. No, okay, so just because you are doing school from home and you might now have the opportunity to do homework while you're watching TV, doesn't necessarily mean that you should do that. If you're doing homework, you should only be doing homework, not only because if you're distracted, it'll take you longer to finish your homework, but also because if you're trying to relax and do homework at the same time, that's just gonna be low quality relaxation and we don't want that either. So power through that homework, get it done quick, and then you can enjoy that pure distraction-free relaxation and just bask in the accomplishment of having finished your work. So if you're doing online school, try to stick to some of the same routines that you had when you were going to school in real life. Now, if you end up going to bed late and now you have an opportunity to sleep in because you don't have a morning class that you need to make it to, I'm not going to tell you to deprive yourself of sleep just to try and stick to your normal school schedule. And you may also find that without the structure of school, you're able to figure out a better schedule for yourself. Like maybe you're a night owl and you just function better if you go to bed later and can wake up later. But sticking to some sort of a routine as much as possible can definitely keep you productive and mentally healthy. So whatever wake up time, bedtime, work time, meal time, etc. works for you, figure that out and just try to keep it consistent. Also try to change out of your pajamas when you start working. I completely get it because I'm a huge stickler for comfort and pajamas are very comfortable. So personally when I'm working at home, I do not dress up or anything. I don't wear jeans. I pretty much don't wear anything that doesn't have a stretchy waistband, but I do change into a different outfit after waking up. I just don't want to be working in the same clothes that I was sleeping in. This concept of trying to stick with your routines also applies to how you spend your free time. So for for example, try to limit the amount of work that you're doing on the weekends so that your weekends still somewhat feel like the weekends. So that you have some relaxation to look forward to and to motivate you rather than all the days just kind of blurring together until you don't know what year it is anymore. Other little things in your day, like if you really enjoyed walking from class to class and getting some fresh air, try to take little walks during the day just around your neighborhood. If you were used to going to the gym after class, try to incorporate some daily exercise into your day. Take breaks. So you can use the Pomodoro technique, which is 25 minutes of work time, five minutes of break time, 
or literally any other length of time, any structure that works for you, it doesn't really matter. Just be sure that you're taking consistent breaks. Especially when you're doing homework, which can be very difficult for the brain, giving yourself those little periods of rest will make it a lot easier to think. And even though you will be investing time into taking those breaks, you'll probably get your homework done faster overall as a result. So the investment pays dividends. And finally, check in regularly. So it can be easy to fall behind on reminders and deadlines when you're not going into a physical classroom every single day. So just try to check in regularly with your online classes. Regularly is such a hard word to say. I've been recording this so many times. So maybe you can make it a habit if you check your emails in the morning. Maybe you can also check your assignments along with that. Or maybe you can set a reminder on your phone to remind you to check in on Google Classroom or something. So those are all my time management tips for the new school year. I'll be back with a new unrelated video next week. And then in two weeks, I'll have part two of this back to school series. I also wanted to let you know that I I'm having a little sale on my 21 days to productive flow email course if you want to start the school year off right by picking up some productive habits this offer ends on Monday so if you are interested be sure to get it before then you don't have to start it as soon as you buy it once you buy it you can choose when you get the first email and then you'll always have access to it if you ever want to refer back to it remember to also check out those Skillshare classes that I linked in the description try those two free months of Skillshare premium Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like if it helps you and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next week. Bye.